2020 has already started off as a really bumpy ride, you know, especially in the financial sector. We've seen the Dow Jones Industrial Average lose about a third of its value in a matter of weeks. Cryptocurrency markets are down. Everything's down. Some are saying this is the beginning of a global economic recession, and others are saying it's just a temporary economic slowdown. Whatever it is, it doesn't look good, at least in the short term. So what effect could this have on blockchain technology? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video as a blockchain developer. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And you don't have to be a developer in order to watch this video. Maybe you're a cryptocurrency investor or you just have some vested interest in the technology itself. Either way, this video is for you. So this has been a crazy month. You know, we've seen stocks plummet from their all-time highs. Uh, Bitcoin lost over half of its value in the last 30 days. Everything is just totally down. So many countries are basically on lockdown. They're closing businesses and keeping people at home. So this is having negative effects on the global economy, and we're not really sure to what extent. You know, is it just a short-term slowdown, or is this the beginning of a long-term recession? You know, I don't claim to have the answer to that question. And honestly, by the time this video comes out, you know, things might have improved already. But what I do want to talk about, and the question that I want to explore is, you know, what effect could a major economic downturn what effect could that have on blockchain technology in general, all right? Because it's a really important question to ask. As always, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. But I wanted to give you some things to think about. So number one is that blockchain technology adoption has been greatly impacted by you know what happens in the cryptocurrency markets. Basically, anytime there's an upward motion in cryptocurrency prices, like a really big one, it draws attention and people start saying, you know, what is this blockchain thing? You see spikes in Google searches and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, that's how I got interested in blockchain technology in the first place was watching cryptocurrency prices go up. And that's how I became a blockchain developer, sort of by going down that rabbit hole and getting interested in the technology. So you see plenty of evidence in this. Like if you go back and look at the, uh, you know, 2017 ICO boom, Bitcoin all time high, there was massive interest in the technology at that point in time when Bitcoin hit its all time high at around $20,000. And when more attention comes to the technology, it naturally brings more people into the space, not just investors, but also people who become developers, people who start blockchain businesses and create new projects. And these are the types of people who help move the space forward. So when cryptocurrency prices go up, it actually does have a very positive impact on the technology. It brings more people in who can solve problems and they funnel down and actually help move the space forward. But the real question is, you know, is the opposite true? Does long-term downward uh, cryptocurrency price move movement have a long-term negative impact on the technology? Well, let's think about one way in which it could negatively impact the technology, the demand side. A lot of the current use cases for blockchain technology are fueled by the demand for it in the first place. All right. So think about uh, Facebook, for example, or any social network. Whenever you get on the social network, it's valuable because other people actually use it. Like imagine trying to get on there and like seeing no status updates. Like it, it just doesn't even make sense to open the application. The platform's still there and it has some intrinsic value, but it, the actual network effect that's gained by using Facebook has to do with other people actually participating in the platform. So the same is true for Bitcoin, all right? So Bitcoin has two primary use cases, uh, at least in my opinion, you know, store value and financial speculation. And both of these are affected uh, by the demand side. All right. So think about financial speculation. Basically, if um, we think the price is just going down, it doesn't become an attractive place to speculate. And likewise, if Bitcoin just trades sideways, it's not very volatile. Um, and that's also not a great place for uh, short term speculators either. All right. So um, and Another thing I'll say is people talk about, you know, Bitcoin not being correlated with the stock market. Well, I think uh, that what we've seen in the past month or so kind of refutes that. If the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost about 30% in a matter of weeks, well, Bitcoin lost over half of its value in a matter of, you know, 30 days or so. And that doesn't seem like sheer coincidence, okay? So let's think about the other thing, store value. You know, if we see demand, you know, evaporate, oh, that's extreme, but, you know, that, that's that's the extreme case that we're considering here. So if the miners on the network all leave because they don't think they can make, they can make a profit, then the network's not as secure as it used to be, and then it de doesn't become a very good store of value. And likewise, if the price just keeps going down, it's not a good place to store your value. So financial speculation and store value are both impacted by the demand side of things. So next, I want to talk about something uh, in the Bitcoin community that everyone's talking about, 
which is the Bitcoin halving coming up in May, the 2020 Bitcoin halving. I've actually got another video about that you can check out if you want to learn more about this. But essentially, the Bitcoin halving is an event that's coming up where miners receive less Bitcoin whenever Bitcoin is mined. Okay, So basically, the implication is that less Bitcoin is going to get created and the supply of Bitcoin is going to decrease. All right. So the big hope with the Bitcoin halving is that it would cause the price of Bitcoin to increase. All right. Because of simple supply and demand economics. So if the supply goes down, or at least the rate of supply goes down, um, that could cause the price to go up. All right. But that is only true if the demand uh, doesn't just plummet. Right. The demand would have to stay constant increase or just like not go down by too much. But if there is a, you know, major economic hardship that could cause a demand for Bitcoin to plummet, and then you wouldn't necessarily get the benefit out of the halving that you would. Now, again, this could be a, a short term thing. You know, if markets correct over time, um, you may still get this kind of benefit, right? But nobody knows for sure. And this is just something to think about. So the next place that demand could have a big impact is on the stock to flow model. So if you're not familiar with this, this is basically a model that people try to use to predict the Bitcoin price over the long term, right? They basically look at um, history in the past and found correlations on the Bitcoin price with its ratio of stock to flow. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, the stock is the current amount of Bitcoin that's circulating and the flow is the rate of production, all right? So here's the big problem, though. Stock to flow only holds up if demand for Bitcoin continues, all right? If it evaporates completely, then stock to flow is not necessarily, like the price wouldn't be correlated with it, at least over the short term. Now, I don't know what's going to happen over the long term. Again, like I said, this is just my opinion. Uh, these are the things to think about. is not financial advice, but a major economic hardship could definitely see Bitcoin price deviate quite a bit from this stock to flow model. All right, so enough about Bitcoin. Let's talk about Ethereum and one of its major use cases right now, which is DeFi or decentralized finance. Okay, so we saw DeFi projects take a pretty major blow uh, during this downturn as well. All right, so you can see the uh, amount of uh, US dollar locked in DeFi peaked at over a billion dollars in February of 2020. And it's been on the decline and we saw a really sharp knife uh, during this recent drop that happened in the stock market as well. So DeFi is taking existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain, things like savings, loans, derivatives. And basically, whenever um, the market started going down, people are pulling their money out of these projects um, and, you know, moving their funds elsewhere. And a lot of these projects also get their value from the network effect that I was talking about. You know, the more people use them, uh, the more valuable they could potentially be. And that could also be affected by the demand side of things as well. Things like lending, for example. And in addition to demand changing, we also saw uh, you know, some of these projects hiccup uh, whenever people tried to pull their funds out of this during this downturn. So we have to ask ourselves, are these protocols ready for this kind of volume? Like if markets crash like crazy and everyone wants to pull their money out, can they actually do it? Can they actually transfer their funds or are they compromised, right? So that's exactly the types of questions that are being asked right now in the you know, DeFi space and the Ethereum community. Basically, when people were trying to trade their assets, there were huge price deviations, right? Some people say as big as 20%. And part of this is because some of the key data providers were just completely bottlenecked and couldn't provide accurate data uh, when it needed to. You know, the network was really congested. Some people had to pay really high network fees just to make their transactions go through. And, you know, it raises the question, like, if you need to pull your money out at a really critical time and everyone else is trying to do the same thing, like, can you actually do it? All right. So these are the types of questions we have to ask ourselves. Can we fix these kinds of problems so that the technology can actually do what we want it to do? All right. Because if it can't do what we want it to do, you know, does it lose its utility? Does it lose its usefulness? And what would that ultimately do for the demand of the technology over the long term? So these are the types of questions we have to ask ourselves during this time. All right. So is it going to have a long term impact on blockchain technology or not? Well, that's ultimately for you to decide, but I wanted to give you these things to think about, you know, in this video. All right. I will tell you personally, from my opinion, uh, I'm here for the long term. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still optimistic about this technology and about this space in general. All right. But, you know, this is not financial advice. I don't claim to know exactly what's going to happen or what, you know, cryptocurrency prices are going to be in the future. So I hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. 
And if you want to become a blockchain developer, then I want to invite you to a free training where I'll show you how to do that step by step. All right, you can check that out over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.